All right, so in the final installment of the shed row build, I thought I'd give you a little bit of a tour. Um, I didn't really video um, too well the last couple of things that I've done, so instead I'm just gonna walk you through and discuss a little bit of what I did to finish it up and get it ready for its first resident. So one of the first things that I did um, to this building was actually add this metal along the front edge. Um, and that helped, the, one of the whole reasons why I, I had a six foot aisleway and not just the stall fronts right up to the edge of the building was because I wanted to have some sort of protective weather barrier um, for the aisle and into the stall. I didn't want rain, you know, just blowing sideways right into the fronts of the stall. Um, but what I didn't want to lose was natural daylight and ventilation. And I don't honestly think ventilation is going to be much of a problem for this structure because it's quite open and airy. Um, but the daylight portion of it, I, I really wanted to make sure um, that I paid attention to. So you can see I only ran the metal paneling uh, partway up. This is actually two sheets. Let's see, there's the seam. So uh, it was four sheets of 12 foot, and that allowed for the last little gap on the top, which, like I said, allows for some more natural um, daylight in here, but blocks the aisle way from getting too much uh, weather blown in. And also when you're walking a horse down the aisle, he's not gonna just think about stepping sideways into these little four foot um, sections here. I wanted to make this more of an enclosed aisleway feeling. What I might do is run some two by fours or something like that along these posts and have a couple of spots to put some hooks on uh, for halters or fly spray or um, just anything like that because the fronts of the stalls don't really have a location to be able to hang much off of. Um, so that'll probably be just another little project that I do uh, as we have more horses in here and utilize it and see what needs to be updated and modified. All right, so this is just walking right up to it. Um, I still have to finish putting some of the green metal just on this little strip here. I think that'll just help finish up making it look a little bit more finished here. This whole side still needs some work, but in the meantime, um, I've got some grain bins put in the last of the eco grid, which is gonna get moved to the barn, but I have to finish putting gravel down up to the edge here. You can see it, it's pretty wet over here. This is where a paddock used to be, and a horse that was in here had dug a giant hole. So until it dries up in a couple more months, there's not a whole lot I can do to mitigate this side, but I can finish bringing in some gravel. Um, regardless, that is a future project and closing in 12 feet of this end. Uh, so I'll have more of an enclosed workspace here. Um, I plan on the far wall to install some sort of shelving system. I haven't quite wrapped my head around it just yet, but that is to come. Here's a little uh, aisleway to get to the stalls. There's our resident. I'll show you what I did in the stall she's not in. So, one of the things that I had to do was to close in one side, right? To actually make it a stall and then the horses wouldn't have to be walking through those vertical supports. Um, so that was pretty simple. I just bought more metal to match. Um, it's important when you hang this metal that you make sure that the you're starting from the bottom and working up and that you're overlapping to the outside so that when water runs off, it doesn't run to the inside of the wall. And then the other thing that I wanted to do inside, I didn't want to just leave this metal exposed here for um, the horses to be able to kick or damage or get hurt on. So I utilized some of the two by sixes from the lean to that I took down um, to put up the shed row and measured it off, uh, cut it, pre-drilled holes, um, wood to metal holes um, or screws, excuse me. Uh, you can see this is where some of the old um, hurricane, t hurricane ties were on the previous building, how it was used. But uh, anyway, so that is approximately four and a half feet tall, I suspect. Um, and you can see this little strip that I ran along the top. I can't remember exactly what this is called. You can get it from any sort of um, lumber supply big box store. These were from Home Depot. 
Um, I think it's called a drywall cap, something to that effect. It's been used before, so it's a bit dirty. But what I really like about these is it's about $2 for an eight foot strip. And I put them on the top or the edges of any surface of wood that a horse might want to chew on. And it's all over inside of my other main barn. I may in fact add a strip along this vertical edge here if horses seem to be wanting to chew on that too much. It's really inexpensive. Um, you can put as many screws in as you want to tack it down. I highly recommend doing that for wood chewing uh, surfaces. So, uh, oh, and then the other thing that I did was I attached a panel to divide each stall. And uh, rather than just have a panel on its own, I had some of this leftover plywood and I uh, wanted to find a way so that horses couldn't get their leg caught when they lay down in their stall. And then for uh, bedding purposes, you know, if I have a self-care boarder that is paying for bedding and the other one is not, um, then they're not going to be kicking the bedding over into the other horse's stall and losing their money from that. So um, some leftover wire, as you can see here, and horses all up in my business, and uh, pre-drew a hole, ran the wire through at various points of the panel, and then on the back side is where I twisted it. Ooh, let's focus. I actually secured it, um, and that's why these uh, horizontal boards are there so that the wire that came through on this side a horse can't get snagged on or anything like that and it kind of helps just give it a little bit more structure the panels connected to the noble panels with their standard um, clamps these are just like uh, chain link fence clamps only they're a little bit larger to support these these bigger posts so anyway I'm just utilizing those to connect the panel to separate the two stalls and then I had to get really creative with how to connect it to the building itself. Um, these connectors are made by Prefert, and I found some at my local Wilco. Um, it probably would be easier to show you on the horse side, but basically they're designed to uh, be able to connect their stall fronts to a post. I'm utilizing it to connect panels to the support post of the building. Um, I actually think that I installed it backwards. I'm pretty sure that this um, open end should be flipped so that the panel can be flush with um, the post. I may or may not swap it. I just I had to get this finished because I knew that this horse was coming, um, but that would be an easy trick to switch. And you can see here, um, it's just another pre-drilled hole and attached right into the uh, right into the post. I think that side, I forgot to add a second washer. So I'm using one of my bow gates to divide up the paddocks because I thought that that would be a convenient thing for cleaning purposes to be able to access between the two paddocks. And then I'm just using, uh, I actually had mostly gates available um, for the rest of the uh, paddock fencing. So one of the things that made this so time consuming is because I'm using gates and I intentionally wanted them to be attached to cemented posts um, so that they couldn't push on them or anything like that. Uh, since the ground is too wet in the field to drive the tractor through, I hand dug all the posts and then set them in cement. So that was a day or two just in and itself to get the posts placed and um, ready to hold weight. And then every single post needed to be pre-drilled with a hole, a secondary pre-drill hole, and then attach the gate hangers. If anybody has ever um, done that themselves, they know that it's not exactly a fast task, but you can just kind of put some music on or a podcast and, and get to town with it. So every single one of these at the corners uh, are utilizing those connectors. Um, that way the whole run of it is nice and secure and they cannot uh, lift it off. That's a big thing I see people do, is they'll, they'll put these top gate um, hangers the other direction, so the same direction as the bottom. And you'll see I have the bottom going up and the top going down. And that makes it so that a horse can't stick their head through the panel and lift the gate up off the hinges. It's a little bit trickier to install it this way because you have to have this set in place 
and then use your uh, gate clamp or whatever you'd call this. It has to be lower than here and you have to lift up the opposite end of the gate and shimmy that up into place and then tighten it. Um, but it's worth the extra time and effort because now the horses won't be able to lift these off the hinges. So like I said, I um, did that on every corner post. I actually am utilizing these two panels slash gates as actual gates so that um, when the field is open, this horse could either go through uh, field access on one of these sides or on the end side because the way that I initially designed it was these end gates were going to be what allows them to go out into the field. But um, I think I'm going to be reworking a little bit of my turnout system. I wanted to give myself the ability to uh, use the gates in different fashions as necessary depending on how I set up um, the rest of the field situation. And last but not least, we can't forget about the actual footing portion of it. Um, the eco grid actually stretched out to about 26 feet and then was just shy of going 24 long or wide. Um, so I ended up along this paddock, I had to actually cut the panels and resecure along the edge by the panel, um, the gates over there. Uh, but the cool thing with the product is that it, it's, it is quite easy to cut with a razor blade and reattach to itself. Um, so you can make it work for just about any location. Um, so she has been in on this paddock for a few days now, and it seems to be holding up pretty well. Uh, there are some areas like right here that's a little bit low, so I was allowing the horse to be in here to help pack it down for me and find the low spots, and now I can just bring in a wheelbarrow of gravel and fill in some of those, some of those low spots for her. So there you have it, the final conversion from a lean-to to a two-stall shed row barn utilizing these portable noble event stall fronts, um, eco grid for the paddocks, and to remind you this structure is 18 feet wide by 36 feet long, so it allows for a nice sized six foot aisleway here. And then you could even add a third stall in in the future or use it as a farrier um, area, fully enclose it for um, hay storage or anything like that. It's, I'm quite pleased with this design aspect coming into actual application here. Final installment of the Shed Row Barn Build. Um, there's a little bit left to see or to do as I said in the video here, but for the most part it's safe, it's able to house horses, um, and there'll always be a little bit of tweaking and things of the like. Um, but an easy method to get a structure put in for horses to come to your property. Thanks for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this series, this little playlist. If there's any questions that you have, leave them down in the comments below. Uh, I'd love to see some of your projects that you do, and don't forget to follow my page to see lots more farm updates and horse show events and things of the like. Bye.